Hey guys, welcome back. In today's episode, we're going to learn how to add validation to our form submissions. So if you guys have noticed on our share ideas, we actually want it to be maximum 240 characters. And I also want to make sure users can submit empty messages. So right now I haven't typed anything in. And if I click share, it actually gives us an error because, well, we are trying to save an empty our content uh, column is going to be empty, right? So I, I want to prevent users from submitting empty content. I actually want to have a five character limit. So they need to at least type in five characters and then maximum 240 characters or whatever you like. So that's going to be our uh, validation. I'm going to learn how to do that in this episode. So let's go back to our controller. And in order to do validation, Laravel is actually very easy. We can use this request helper function that we've been using so far and do request and then use the function validate and I validate and inside this validate function you can pass it what you want to validate and what are some validation requirements so you can pass in an array and inside it tell Laravel what you want to validate so I'm going to actually go in our and find our submit form we have this text area named idea I'm going to copy this and so I want to, first of all, validate this idea. And then in front of it, you're going to tell what should be valid, how it should be validated. And Laravel comes with a bunch of pre-made validation rules. And some of them are, first of all, required. So the required rule tells Laravel, hey, this field should be always present, right? If the user leaves it empty, then we have a problem. And then you can add in some other fields, such as min. And then it just tells Laravel, hey, I want minimum of five items or five characters. And then you can also add max. And this one is, for example, I'm going to say 240. And to separate the rules, if you guys notice, I'm adding this value here, right? I actually don't know what it's called right now. My mind is going blank, but that's one way of doing it, right? So I'm going to save this and we can actually uh, test it out. I guess a vertical line. So I'm going to go back. And we can test it out and see if it works or not. I'm going to leave, I'm going to click an empty uh, link. And as you can see, we get redirected and we don't get an error anymore, right? And that should tell us, hey, this is actually something is happening, but we're not showing the error message itself, right? So how do we show the error message after we do the validation? So we can go to our form and there's actually an easy way of doing it. I want to show the error message under our text area. Right, and the way I can do that is I'll add an if statement and to check if there is an error, you can just say error, just like this. And then say, sorry, there is an error directive in uh, blade error and then the name of your field. So it's gonna be idea. So if you have an error for the idea text area, that's basically what we're telling Laravel. And then we can display it here. And for sake of simplicity, I'm just gonna add a span and I'll give it some, I guess, FS6 and then text danger. That's going to be a small text that is red. And to display it, you can here use dollar sign message. So with the error directive, Laravel will automatically inject this message variable. So you can just access it and it's going to be your error message, right? So we're going to use the error directive, which is built in with uh, Laravel blade. And you need to also include the end error. Uh, so let's go test it out if and see if this works or not. So I'm going to reload the page and I'm going to send an empty field. And you can see it is telling us the idea field is required. So it is working. I'll put one character in and it's telling us, hey, the idea field must be five characters, right? And I'm actually go back and I'm going to change the maximum to be, let's say, 10 characters. And I'm going to type in more than 10. And you can see it tells us, hey, the idea field must be not be greater than 10 characters. So it automatically does the validation for you. And you can also show the error message as easy as this. It took us like one minute. Now, I'm going to actually add in some margin at the top. I don't want it to be so close. I'll say in margin top two. This is going to be bootstrap. So I'll test it again. And it seems like it did not work. I'll make this D block. Why not? So let's see if it works now and it is working now. So it looks pretty cool now, looks nice. I'll revert this back to 240 characters. 
and I think instead of five, maybe we can have minimum of three characters. So now there are a lot more validation rules, right? You don't actually need to memorize these. These are the most common ones. So that's why I thought I'd show you guys. For example, we have one for email. We have a bunch more. In order to find all of these, you can just go on Google and search Laravel validation and go to the Laravel validation documentation. Make sure you're on the latest version for your Laravel version. And if you scroll down, you can see there is a section called available validation rules. Just click on it and you will see all of them here. So you don't need to memorize these at all. I personally don't memorize them. So, and whenever I need something and I don't know what to use, I just come here and I read all of these. Maybe you want to validate an array. Hey, there is an array rule. You want to validate a file? Hey, there is a file rule. You want to validate IP address. There is a rule for that. So you don't need to memorize all of these. You can just come to the documentation and select them. And let's say you want to validate an IP address or a URL. You just click on it. And basically it shows you what it does, right? Just checks if it's a valid IP address or not. And some of them do have examples such as meme types. And the reason is because it has a different format, right? You need to add the double colon and then include all the meme types for your files, right? So some of them have examples and some of them are very straightforward. So for example, JSON, if you wanted to validate a JSON, you just basically put JSON here, right? That's it. You're going to be validating against a JSON file. And it's actually this simple, guys. It's as simple as this. Now, we can also do this a bit differently by passing a request file here. For now, we're not going to be doing it that way. I'll show you guys how to do that later on. But for now, this is as simple as we have done it here. So hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comment section below and I'll try to help you guys out. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content. And I see you guys on the next episode. Have a great day.